All right, back in Simeo. Uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, a little walkthrough of the processes tab. So the processes tab is really useful for creating some user defined logic. Uh, what I mean by that is you you can create uh, visual representations of logical flow to be able to do all sorts of tracking uh, statistics in the background in Simeo or take actions on your uh, entities within the model. So a process in general is like a function. You can create the logic. So let's go up to here to do uh, create process. And it's currently called process one. So under general, I'm going to change that to uh, my process. Why not? OK, usually these things need to be descriptive like uh, any other function naming uh, schema, you would want to make sure that the name of the process makes sense according to its function, what it does. Uh, what happens is, is you have a flow that goes from the beginning uh, node here to the end node there. Anytime that this is triggered, a token is created that is a, uh, a token analog of the object that create that started the process. So I know that sounds confusing, but what I mean is let's say an entity enters into a service a server block and I have my process trigger when they enter into a server block. That entity, let's say it's customer 47. Generates a token. Customer 47 token that goes through this flow and that token inherits properties from its parent object. So for example, if we were deciding using like a decide block, drag that out here. I can have a condition that says, hey, is this uh, a customer of a certain type? Is this customer have a certain priority? I can check some conditions about it. This is what useful for a decide block. So for example, in my decide block, I might say something like, um, you, you could do all sorts of logic. Um, one thing that is very useful is the protected word is. So is, if I hover over it, is is a keyword that may be used to check whether the object or element is of a specific reference type. So I could say is customer, for example. And what this will do is once this token is generated through here, it'll go to the decide block. And if indeed this returns true, then the token will proceed in this direction. Let's say it was true and I wanted to assign um, some state variable a new value. That would be the case. Otherwise, I would end the logic. So you can see that these common steps over here are easy to drag and drop into the process blocks. Um, let's say that this is, you know, like I said, it's my decide and then I assign it something. Um, I could also say, well, if uh, you know, I wanted to assign a state variable a value, but I, I want to just decide um, I want to assign a value regardless. I might have an assign block ahead of that decide block, but you can see how it will flow logically with the arrows. In order of from beginning to end left to right. I can drag this assign block after this one. I can also drag the endpoints. And have them reroute to wherever I want them to reroute to. So you can see I can I can make my logic as uh, complicated as I want to. OK, I'll delete that step. Let's say after this is true, I want to assign a state variable a name. I can also assign multiple state variables in the same block in the same logic that I would do uh, out in the facility view. I can add multiple state variables and say, you know, hey, I want to make this equal to uh, 14 or something like that, right? Um, that's just a, that's just a random uh, assignment, but you can save a lot of space as opposed to doing multiple assign blocks all in a row. You can contain all of the assigned steps within one block. All right, so this is a process that does some logic, and if this results in true, it will assign a value. If it's false, it will just end the process. What are some of these other common steps? Let's create a process. 
there are some other uh, common ones, including tally. So I've done this in a different video, but a tally would do a tally statistic. So take an observation of a certain value. Um, you could also have some functions, uh, some steps here like uh, destroy. Let's say uh, I put destroy here. Um, what destroy does is it'll take the associated parent object, like the entity, for example, and it will destroy it. Like it will no longer exist within the system. Um, you could also uh, have a transfer. So a transfer, uh, what that will do is it'll take the object and it will move it from its current node to a different node. You know, these processes are getting complicated, but you can see that these are ultimately um, malleable to whatever your needs are. Let's say you want to have some logic that um, were connected to each other. So they have one process here, my process, I have process one. What I want is uh, if my process uh, proceeds through to this point, I want it to be able to trigger process one. So what I'll have it do is use uh, the execute step. So execute will then execute a different process. I'll have it execute process one. And so what this will do is um, if it makes it to this point in logic, it will just execute whatever process I tell it to. Um, so these blocks are uh, very useful. Um, I'll leave it up to you in order to, to discover all of the different uh, ways in which you can uh, keep track of variables in the background with like a sign and tally steps or uh, manipulate the entities within the facility view using um, destroy and transfer and uh, executing other logic steps. Uh, but I hope you found that helpful and uh, good luck. Happy modeling.